Barbican, a word meaning an out fortification or defense of a city. The original structure comprised of four walls with four gates, one in each wall. In 200 AD, the Romans built this stronghold to protect their settlement. Built on shallow land, this site was immune from attack, but not from periodic flooding. As protection from Anglo-Saxon invaders, a wall was built around London, joining with the northern gate of the fort. I guess that didn't work out. Then, it gets a bit unclear what happened next. Maybe it was just left to become a wasteland. The Barbican next enters recorded history in the 9th century as the Ward of Cripplegate. Historians believe that the name derives from the Saxon word Cripplegate, a gate through which pedestrians were obliged to creep. Through a gradual process of misinterpretation, this became Cripplegate. A common misconception at the time was that the name derived from Edmund the Martyr, whose body was carried through the gate in 1010 and thought to miraculously cure cripples. So significant was this belief that when a church was built on the site in the 11th century, it was named after St. Giles, the patron saint of cripples. In the 12th century, Cripplegate became a center for Jewish emigres. They set up banking houses and a burial ground. Up until the 15th century, the London Wall was sporadically updated and brick battlements were added. As the wall grew, so did the surrounding area. Lodging houses, tenter grounds, inns and alleys, Cripplegate sprung to life. By the 16th century, a division between the north and south side of the wall became apparent. South of the wall, or Cripplegate within, became home to many successful and prosperous individuals. Martin Frobisher, the seaman, Lancelot Andrews, the bishop and scholar. Even Thomas More was born here. North of the wall, however, was another story. The area of Cripplegate without became an insalubrious place, home to magicians, prostitutes and pickpockets. Also located here were the stink industries, named after their odorous processes. Amongst the debauchery, there was a thriving art scene. William Shakespeare lived here, as did Ben Jonson and John Milton. The whole place was teeming with writers. But in 1665, the Great Plague took advantage of this populous and ramshackle area. 8,000 out of a population of 11,000 lost their lives. And with the arrival of the Great Fire in 1666, the place grew more ruinous. In the 19th century, railways and warehouses sprung up and the site regained purpose once more. However, this was short-lived, as in the middle of the 20th century, the place was once again claimed by fire. And in 1940, German bombs fell upon Cripplegate, destroying the old city forever. But in the early 1950s, plans for redevelopment began and slowly there emerged a neighborhood of flats restaurants and public spaces that is collectively known as the Barbican. For better or worse, the Barbican has experienced every aspect of London's history. It has, in a word, been London.